Oh, this stuff could keep me busy for hours, I tell you. I love it. Love it a lot. I'm joking. That's Jimmy. Are you funny, Jimmy? Am I funny? He says you're about as funny as as a, as a, as, a, as a, an, an unfunny thing. He says I'm stretching it. So hello today, ho oh, 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 ho ho. Today I'd like to take a look at this, which is one of my most favourite bands of all time. Wonderful, Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd. I think, ooh, yeah, I've got I've, all, I've got all sorts of notes in these books because um, this was the original lineup: Sid Barrett, Roger Waters, Rick Wright, Nick Mason. So drummer keyboards, guitar, bassist, and they were absolutely awesome, and um, well, they cracked on. Sid was the sort of founder of the band, really, you could say, and he uh, he uh, was, a, was an absolute musical genius, although sadly, um, he did like his narcotics, um, and um, eventually ended up deranged by taking too much LSD, this chap was just up the road from me, uh, from Stanmore. I, I was, I'm from Northwood, and Rick Wright was, was from Stanmore. So I didn't meet him, obviously, because he, he he's older than I am. He was sort of from born in, well, 1945, so 20 years before me. So we, we never crossed paths. Nick Mason was from Hampstead, a, a wealthy uh, family that his, his father was a, a motor racing... Um, Director of motor racing films, I believe. And this this chap, I think, was from Cambridge. I think, if I'm right in saying, um, he he was a very. They're all they're, the, all these all these band members. They're re hyper clever. And if you've ever heard of heard them speak, you you'd realise they sound like I do, and I'm hyper clever, of course. Isn't it? <laughs> Not. No, I'm joking. But they they do have very sort of eloquent uh, voices. So they kicked off early in the sixties. And the band was very successful. It had lots of um, lots of good songs, and they used to play at places like the Roundhouse in London, and uh, and ultimately um, found fame mostly by their light shows they used to do. They used to they had a clever tech of putting oil, coloured oil, into slides, and as the slides heated up, they would project them onto the walls of the building. That they were playing in, you know, the backdrop, as it were, of the band of the of the uh, of the gig, and um, ultimately create a, a, an early light show, which of course is what Pink Floyd absolutely famous for. And you can see that, the, well, Sid's gone very psychedelic here. The rest are more sort of Beatles looking, but um, Sid was from Cambridge as well, in actual fact. All hyper clever people. I, I strongly recommend you look into their music. As I say, sadly, Sid had a meltdown on on, on lysergic acid, and um, and ultimately had to quit the band, and and that was the end of that, mate. Mm, it's gone. It's all over. And you can slowly see, well, shine on you, crazy diamond. One of their songs they wrote it, it explains the thing. You know, there's a look in your eyes. Yeah, and you can see in here in the photo, sadly, that he is slowly just melting. And uh, it got to a stage where um, he was effectively shunned to the back, you know, and uh, he didn't turn up to gigs. He was he was out of his head. You can see the rest of them look quite sane, but uh, old Sid, poor Sid, is looking a very very um, hollow shell of himself, isn't he? Although he looks good in that photo, he's all right. He seems the lights are on in the, in the attic, in it. But um, towards the end, the lights were on, but no one was at home, unfortunately. Which is very sad. I'm not. I'm not making fun because that that that's a very sad scenario. From from the victories of their early success and, and the wonderful songs that they had on in, on Piper of the Gates of Dawn, which I believe was one of their first albums, named after the, one of the chapters. In a great book called *The Wind in the Willows*, by the way, just in case, in case you hadn't heard of it. But um, so this book's quite, quite lengthy, so I don't know how how long this video is going to be. Probably too long <laughs> for most people's. But you can see how happy they all are here. You know, early victories. Look at look at these wonderful outfits they're wearing in the sixties. 
and um, I've, I've, so I'll start speeding up. Yeah, they were at Nebworth, that's Rick, uh, the, the keyboardist, brilliant keyboard player. And that's Roger, brilliant, he wrote most of the songs as well. Well, Sid wrote a lot and Rick wrote them. So, introduction time. Here's David Gilmore who took over from Sid when Sid melted. They, they, they got a, 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 another guitarist in from a band called Joker's Wild, which was David Gilmore. And here you can see um, the transition um, photographs, but there's Sid's obviously been sent to the back of the back of the room, back of the class, you know. And, and Dave is now up front, and they're they're obviously introducing Dave Gilmore, who's a brilliant guitarist. Let's face it, he also has had a solo career, um, which which was fantastic. I always put the little tossage to sleep, though, didn't he? What's it's gone? It's already nipped off it as. But uh, by 68, um, Sid had started to go seriously uh, wrong and, and was sort of buggered off back living with his mum in Cambridge, you know, um, who was looking after him, obviously. Cause he was, and now he, you see, Sid's not in the picture anymore, isn't he? He's, he's gone, he's, he's out of it. Uh, so there you go. That's, that's, uh, Dave takes over, Dave Gilmore. David Gilmore. I, 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 I saw him once, I didn't meet him in the sense that shook his hand and said hello, but I saw him once. Um, he was driving a red Ferrari, he used to live near Henley. And um, when I sort of did meet him, because I did say something, I can't remember, vaguely remember, because my mind's gone out, and it's not on LSD by the way, but my, my, my mind's still dilapidated now as well but he, I remember he, he had a red Ferrari 308 GTB or GTS and and it was it had a number plate on it it said DG7 so if you're, if you're watching Dave I, I know you're out I've seen you mate I met you I have I have sort of sort of met him in a funny sort of brief way but um yeah not not really though so these are all I'll speed through because otherwise it's getting on but they're brilliant. Um, in fact, Dave's looking a bit ragged there anyway. God, maybe they were all on ASD or something. <laughs> they did music for films as well, like there's a Brisky Point they did, and um, they did another um, movie as well, which I can't rightfully remember now. Obscured by Clouds. They did the soundtracks and that. I say, madam, put something on. <laughs> or maybe not. No, so by now, Sid's completely off, off his rocker. Obviously, he's 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 he's, he's got some uh, female company in there. I don't know what the vase is doing. <laughs> what's in that? What's in that vase? You know what I mean? My uncle Arthur. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's all good. But no, and, and the music just got better and better. Atom Heart Mother, classic. How many times have I got stoned and gone to sleep listening to Atom Heart Mother? And they had all these kind of. The prom, uh, props and things they used to do like one one time they had a big pink pig that they launched over the top of Battersea power station and it, it broke loose this darn thing it was an inflatable and it broke loose metal metal was a brilliant album really good long 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 orchestral bits and bobs and this pig broke loose and it was kind of spotted by um Airline pilots who were like freaking out, saying, um, "You know, you know, you can imagine the the the, the, the scramble, like the banter over the over the over the over the, over the airways, can't you? You know, we're, we're spotting a pink pig, sort of thing." And the traffic controllers would have just thought, "Oh my God, what have they been taking? You know, <laughs> what what have they got in the oxygen tanks in that aircraft? You know." But it's true; it's it's actually happening. It actually, actually did happen. This is a great book. I love it. I love this book. This was bought for me by my mum for my 23rd birthday present. And um, so these are the sort of things they used to have, these big inflatables, you know, as I say, as I say. And they broke into America and uh, in, in the 70s. It was our oh, year. And of course the war came up, came about, the Pink Floyd, the war. We don't need no education. I remember my English teacher saying to me that that's a double negative, so you actually do need education. Because, it... <laughs> but there's the pig, not not the actual one that burst away. No, there here's the one that got that got away from Battersea. That's Battersea Power Station. It used to be a coal-fired power station in in southwest London, I believe it is, or, or on the River of Thames. Anyway, it's it's gone now. But it's very it's pig ahoy, you know. If pigs could fly, all this sort of thing. 
So this is a great book. If you're interested in Pink Floyd, there's the wall. And, and um, obviously that was that was pretty pretty epic of, of an album. You know, if you've never if you've never heard Pink Floyd, then 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 check them out because you'll you'll love them. But there's some awesome albums that, 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 that they've made. So I'm speeding through this video is going to be a, another another mammoth mammoth uh, th thing. Otherwise. These are the solo albums that About Face Dave Gilmore made. He's made quite a few of them, actually. This book's that was the pros and cons of hitchhiking and much waters. Anyway, I'll cut that one out short. Otherwise, it's going to get too long. This is a great book. It's been written by Nick Mason, who's the drummer of Pink Floyd. And it's a personal history of Pink Floyd by Nick Mason himself. This is just cheap, um, soft back. They had this brilliant graphic designer called Storm Ferguson who, who used to do all these sort of images for them and think up uh, all, all the, all the um, artwork for the albums, which, which is, is, is awesome, you know, awesome. Again, you know, there's, there's plenty of photos in this book if, if you're interested sort of thing. Um, so, well, okay, what were these ISBN numbers is it you want? Um, there you go, that's for that one. And this one, what we got here, there you go, that's the ISBN, so you can quickly refer to them. So, a couple of albums, classic album of all time, they probably ever made, The Dark Side of the Moon, which is just well worth a listen to. If you've never heard this, you're missing out. Um, when I was a kid, I used to smoke the wacky weed, and uh, this is possibly one of the most, arguably the best albums to smoke the wacky weed to. Um, it, it just goes takes you to another terrestrial level, doesn't it? Uh, not that I'm condoning or recommending that you uh, smoke wacky backy, but um, certainly listen to the music and, and just, just, you know, have a glass of water sort of thing. Classic album, obviously classic Storm Ferguson design, the prison with, with the, uh, the light going through it. And this, I think, was the, one of the last albums that they did, which is awesome bit of kit it had a flashing light on it in the old days this thing used to flash and i remember the poster uh for it had a flashing light of the advertising posters on the walls of the buildings had a flashing light as well it's called pulse and it's like a kind of compilation album of all the best works they've ever done and it comes i don't know if i can get it out with one end isn't it? No, probably going the wrong way that's why i mean you know Scratch my elbow with my asshole. <laughs> Sorry to be so rude, but that's that's the way I think. But um, it's got a lovely um, graphic. Uh, you know, that's upside down. Good day, mate. How you doing? I'm a, oh, I come from Australia, isn't it? But it's um, it, it's it's got some lovely graphics in here. Well worth having. You can get these quite cheaply now as well on the internet. That's a typical light show from Pink Floyd. You know, it's awesome. Of course, Rick Wright is dead. Sid Barrett is dead. So you're going to, have to be hard pushed to actually uh, see them together. Roger split up with a band and never really got back with them that much. He's he's a great bloke, but he just somehow couldn't get on with Dave and and, and, the, and the other crew, especially Rick. Although Rick's passed away, as I say, that, that's Rick. Um, so I don't think we'll ever see Pink Floyd again playing live. Sadly, because because I've seen them three times. But um, and they were awesome on all, all on all occasions. They were awesome, and all you could smell in the crowd was the hashish. <laughs> but um, yeah, the, the show, the light shows were just incredible and, 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 and quite quite exceptional. But no, please do check out the band. Check out the um, check out the videos they've got on the internet. There's bound to be loads on the YouTube. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much, as Dave Gilmore would say. And Jimmy's gone sound out in it. It's crashed out. It's absolutely paralyzed it, isn't it? It's been polaxed. It's been absolutely paralyzed with, with absolute boredom. Ah, ah. Anyway, cheers.